Hey, what is going on, crypto people? It is the Crypto Siege with another day in the life <laughs> and the crazy life that it's a digital asset space. Good afternoon and happy Monday to you. It's payday. It is payday for those of you that are participating on the Celsius Network platform. It is payday. So congratulations. Happy payday to each and every one of you. Guys, I got to tell you, this is really, really interesting. Some great stuff that we're going to talk about today. Two things kind of coming from the lawyer front, or the lawyer ring front that I'm really, really excited to share with you guys. Hopefully, I'll, in about two or three days, she'll be able to be back on camera, be back on live streaming. So it looks like the only thing left to settle is the nose swelling around the nasal area. So in any case, guys, yeah, so the market is doing what the market does. Very cool. That's interesting. That is awesome. Uh, but the really, really exciting news for me today is that John E. Beaton has been granted the, uh, I guess it's the Amica, Amiki, Amica status, right? So the motion to intervene was denied, but he was granted uh, the Amica status, which is um, awesome. Awesome, awesome. And essentially, it, it roughly means friend of the court. We will go over that um, um, as well as much as as much as we can, <laughs> as much as we can go over that. And the other thing that I want to share with you guys is this here, the CEI feedback on clarifying laws around cryptocurrency and blockchain technologies. I, I really want to get into this as well. This is a response to Senator Toomey's request for information. I'm going to get into that as well. You can see it here, it says, Dear Senator Toomey. And I'm going to talk about who these people are um, as well before I get into it. But that is really, really cool. Shout out to Johnny Deaton. You know, we said from day one that that dude was a pit bull. And we also said that he was going to be a factor in this case. He was going to be a factor in this case. It doesn't matter if it's a huge factor or a middle factor or a little factor. He was going to be a factor. So it's going to be really curious to see um, uh, how John Deaton does um, do his thing. Uh, but congratulations, uh, John. You do a really, really uh, outstanding job. We appreciate uh, you taking all your time, energy, and resources to share with the community, to act on our behalf. You know, uh, a, a little voice is better than no voice at all, if you will. And so, again, thank you. Let's go over the market, guys. Um, so, very, very interesting stuff. Shout out to that dude, Mickey B. Fresh and Patty XRP. They continue to do their thing and helping the community level things up. Panther Protocol looking like a monster. Looking like a monster. In any case, so Bitcoin, let me make sure it's right. Is Bitcoin really at $49,280? Let's see what's going on here. Oh, wow, it is. It's up 13% on the seven day. $49,280 for Bitcoin. Ethereum is at $3,419. Cardano's $2.21. cents. Uh, Finance coins, $428, up 24%. Solana, there it is, $170. Got a little bit of Solana. Do you? 25% on the seven day it is up. XRP is at $1.05, is up 10% on the seven day. Polka dots at $31.40. Uh, Doge coins at 22 cents, almost 23 cents. Terra Luna is at $48.82. And 40, uh, $48 it's up 41% on the seven day. Goodness gracious, that's awesome. Avalanche uh, starting to simmer down a bit, $66.96. I probably will take profit on Avalanche now because it looks like it is uh, kind of petered out there just a bit, taste some profit on the Avalanche stash. I did cash out some, uh, uh, took profits, I should say, on um, some Hedera hash graph and some ANKR uh, as well. Last night, that was cool. Uh, let's see, chain links at twenty seven dollars, Algorand's at two dollars. So that's kind of kind of like the top there. We always keep an eye on Polygon at a dollar and thirty cents. Axie Infinity, whoa, hundred and eighteen percent 
on the seven day. Wow, where did that come from? Uh, I know Crypto Eddie mentioned Axie Infinity the other day. I never did pick up any of this uh, token. I was really on the wrong platform working with the Yield Guild games. I kind of missed this one, but in any case, there it is. So yeah, the market is doing what the market does, guys. That is really, really cool. Let's get into the John E. Deaton's uh, motion to intervene thing. Pretty cool. Breaking. Um, I guess I'm going to read this here because uh, it's a little easier. Judge, this is from Crypto Law US on Twitter. It's just John Deaton's team. Crypto Law, at Crypto Law US on Twitter. Definitely want to follow these guys so you can stay up to date what's going on. Judge Torres grants Amica status to John E. Deaton and Movant and denies the motion to intervene, right? So the motion to intervene would have been, would have been the really, that would have been the 10, you know, on a scale of one to 10. So, but the Amica status, like John mentioned the other day when he was on Charles Gasparino's channel, um, uh, with Charles Gasparino on Fox Business, you know, Amica status is cool as well here. So added to our document library, the text of the order from Judge Torres, congrats again, 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 John Deaton. We appreciate you, my dude. We definitely appreciate you. Now, listen, I don't understand all this legal stuff. So I'm going to kind of go. Um, uh, with the. Uh, granting part now, basically, she's kind of laying out the reasons for why the motion in the beginning, the reason first, just kind of both sides argument. And then um, she kind of lays out re the reason for the motion to intervene uh, being denied, right? Accordingly, Mobot's motion to intervene is denied. So um, in any case, she explains why, why it wasn't, right? So John and perhaps um, uh, Johnny Deaton and perhaps Jeremy Hogan kind of can kind of go over this. I'm sure that they will. But I'm just kind of going to go over this part, right? Because this is your XRP Ripple daily news in around zero to 10 minutes, right? So I'm going to try to do as best I can here. So the Miki Curie, I don't know how to pronounce it. Movents shall, however, be granted to act as a Miki Curie. There is no governing standard rule or statute prescribing the procedure for obtaining leave to file and make its brief in the district court. And so deciding whether to prevent an individual to act as amicus curiae lies in the firm discretion of the district court. Usually amicus brief should be allowed in the following circumstances. And I think this is important. When a party is not represented competently or is not represented at all, which is one of the reasons why Johnny Deaton looked to file the motion to intervene because we, the XRP holders, were not being represented in something that, in a case that could affect us heavily as XRP holders. And so usually a mixed briefer should be allowed in the following circumstances when a party is not represented competently or is not represented at all when the amicus has an interest in some other case that may be affected by the decision in the present case, though not enough affected to entitle the amicus to intervene and become a party in the present case, or when the amicus has unique information or perspective that can help the court beyond the help that the lawyers for the parties are able to provide. The court concludes that a MICA status strikes a proper balance between permitting Movans to assert their interest in this case and allowing the parties to remain in control of the litigation. Okay, that the named parties shall always remain in control with the amicus merely responding to the issues presented by the parties. The amicus cannot initiate, create, extend, or enlarge issues. Further, an amicus has no right to appeal or dismiss issues. Mobots may view XRP differently from defendants and thus may stress different arguments. And so even if intervention is unavailable, they will provide the court with meaningful perspective and will help ensure complete and plenary presentation of, of difficult issues 
so that the court may reach a proper decision, guys. I just got to tell you, this is big in so many ways. Now, what we have like the motion to intervene, absolutely. But this is because what this is saying is that if the court is acknowledging that there's value, there's a value add from this amicus or and or motion to intervene that got discarded. In other words, there's this is hugely pertinent and important to XRP holders. This case is hugely pertinent and important to XRP holders, the individual average Joe and Jane. And the court is acknowledging how important it is and how this could affect us massively and is allowing our voices, if you will, to be heard. Whatever limited status that it may be, what's more important is the court acknowledging that it's important to be heard, to our perspective be heard. And I just think that is really, really cool. The court views the uh, amici briefs as desirable because they represent, let me read this, let me go over this. The court views the amici briefs as desirable because they represent third parties whose particular interests may be affected by the court's ruling and whose particular interests are echoed in broader public interest. And again, personally, I don't know, but this also feels like this is um, a blow to the SEC for future for future, right? Because surely the, 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 the digital asset space ecosystem is looking at what Ripple is doing, paying close attention. Obviously, they, they, I'm certain that they know about what Johnny Deaton is doing, and they will look to do the same things as well when it comes to the SEC. So, or a motion to intervene, for example. However, in order to maintain the balance between parties and then Miki, the court will not permit Wavon Sesame and CC to offer evidence or pre present witnesses. That was a tough one. That was a tough blow. And the Mickey who argues facts should rarely be welcomed. Defendants have the opportunity to motive. Defendants have the opportunity and motive to acquire the evidence movements would offer. Hmm. Defendants had the opportunity and motive to acquire the evidence Movance would offer, and so permitting Movance to present it instead would result in an end around court imposed. So, okay, so she's saying that any information that John Deaton or we would, might provide, the defendants have the opportunity and motive to, to get that evidence. There it is. So, no need to provide it, right? So, limitations on the parties, including discovery restriction, blah, blah, blah. So, the SEC argues that the amicus status is inappropriate because Movance are not neutral parties. However, courts have accepted that by the nature of things, an amicus is not normally is not normally impartial. And so there is no rule that amici must be totally disinterested. Very cool. Therefore, although the court notes Movance partial, partiality, that bias does not bar they're participating as Amici. So I think the Movance are, the, are the us and, and then there's John Deaton, right? So um, it says here, permitting, um, permitting the move on to act as amicus to assist with significant legal issues, although acknowledging the Movance highly partial partisan position. More, moreover, by not permitting movements to pre present evidence, the court will limit their participation to legal as opposed to factual issues preventing prejudice to the SEC. According to movements in the individual capacity shall be permitted to act as the Michi jury in this action. As such, movements shall be allowed to assist the court by briefing legal issues. As such, movements shall be allowed to assist the court by briefing legal issues relevant to the case as approved in advance by the court. I think this is where John will re really be able to kind of um, uh, gear things up and use this kind of to his advantage. So the court contemplates that such assistance will be most beneficial during briefing on dispositive motions, but, but may exercise its discretion to request or deny further applications as appropriate. Mm -hmm. So conclusion, for the reasons stated above, motions, uh, the Movance motion to intervene is denied. Movance shall be permitted to uh, act as a Michi Curie as described in this order. 
the court, the court is directed to terminate the motion uh, at ECF number 122. So there that is there. Again, um, uh, it's not that this, I think it's just great news no matter what. On a scale of one to 10, the motion in the intervene would have been a 10, but I feel like this is still a six or seven. And I just think anything um, in any way that we can participate is absolutely outstanding. Okay, so let's get on to the next thing here. I think this is hugely important. The Competitive Enterprise Institute, CEI, right? The Competitive Enterprise Institute responds to your request, Senator Toomey, for legislative proposals to clarify rules around cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology, collectively distributed ledger technology, DLT projects. Now, so who is the CEI? All right, so our team says here, the Competitive Enterprise Institute is a nonprofit public policy organization dedicated to advancing the principles of limited government, free enterprise, and individual liberty. CEI's mission is to promote both freedom and fairness by making good policy, good politics. We make the uncompromising case for economic freedom because we believe it is essential for entrepreneurship, innovation, and prosperity to flourish. And this is some of the people here. Um, so it's got to meet our, meet our experts, meet our staff, and meet our board. This is meet our experts. Senior fellow, senior fellow, John Berlaw, banking and finance deregulation and financial regulation. Robert Carter, senior attorney, CEI litigation legal, client wage crews, vice president for policy and senior fellow, business and government consumer freedom dereg, and director uh, Myron Ebel, director for Center for Energy and Environment, Climate Energy, and I can just go on and on and on here. So there's some, some lawyers and some um, CEO, president and CEOs here, quite the staff. And so um, these are experts and you can get people that maybe perhaps are on the board of directors here, um, which is cool. But in any case, let's take a look at what they offer to Senator Toomey. The Competitive Enterprise Institution uh, Institute responds to your request for leg legislative proposal to clarify rules around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. CEI proposes two actions. The Competitive Enterprise Institute proposes two actions that would clarify rules and encourage innovation in this emerging and increasingly important field. The first proposal excludes DLT projects from the definition of investment contract in the Securities Act of 1933, thereby removing them from the Securities and Exchange Commission's jurisdiction. <sighs> yeah. Alternatively, the second proposal eases access to private capital markets for crypto entrepreneurs via modifications to Regulation A and Regulation Crowdfunding. CEI stands ready to assist staff in implementing <laughs> these proposals. Proposal one, exclude DLT projects from the definition of investment contracts in the Securities Act of 1933. I'm not going to go over all of this, but I just I do think it's important. This is a definite, definite, definite read. And if I remember, I will link this in the description. This is really, 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 really good. Congress included investment contract as one of the enumerated instruments deemed the Security and Securities Act of 1903. Congress did not define this term in either the statute or its legislative history. The state level securities laws known as blue sky laws for which the term apparently derived, also did not define it. Nonetheless, through judicial interpretation, it came to mean the placing of capital or laying out of money in a way intended to secure income or profits from its employees. And so they go into the Howey test here, which I thought was cool. Um, thus, in a decade since the Howey, the SEC has rewritten an investment of money to include an unsolicited gift of tokens that best no equity and that the receiver may never utilize it and may never utilize. This interpreta uh, interpretation 
demonstrates to test incongruity with blockchain economics or DLT projects, business models. As SEC Commissioner Hester Peirce stated, the SEC's approach has made it extremely difficult for a company to distribute a token, a process that typically includes planning for a future in which people use the network and talking positively about its prospects for success without running into a charge that the company is engaged in a securities offering. Love it. I'm, again, I'm not going to read all of this. I did want to share that. Um, uh, it's a very, very good read. Let me see if I can get the proposal. The SEC's botched guidance. Whoa. The commission's DLT disarray emerged in its own in its only sus, sus, uh, substantive try of clarity. In 2019, commissioner staff led by senior advisor for digital assets innovation, Valerie Shapretonet, published a 13-page framework for investment contract analysis of digital assets. The document attempted to apply the Howie prongs for DLT projects. It was widely panned as only creating more confusion as, as Commissioner Peirce aptly described. While Howie has four factors to, con four factors to consider, the framework lists 38 separate considerations, many of which includes several sub points. A seasoned securities lawyer might be able to infer which of these considerations will likely be controlling and might therefore be able to provide the appropriate way to each, whether the firm gives anything new to the seasoned securities lawyer used to operating in the fact and circumstances world of Howie is an open question. I worry that non-lawyers and lawyers not steeped in securities law and its attendant lore will not know what to make of that particular guidance. They're not fans of the SEC, how about that? The SEC scattershot approach has caused mass confusion, as you stated in the recent hearing in regard to stable coins. My whole point is there needs to be clarity on this, quote, and we certainly shouldn't be taking enforcement actions against somebody without having first provided that clarity, unquote. SEC Commissioner's Purse and Elot Roisman stated, there is a decided lack of clarity for market participants around the applications of security laws to digital assets and their trading as evidenced by the requests each of us received for clarity and the consistent outreach to the commissioner, to the commission staff for no action and other relief. Former SEC Chair Mary Jo White, now representing Ripple Labs, in the closely watched SEC enforcement litigation stated there is a crying need for clarity for crypto rules. Yet, instead of acknowledging the confusion, new SEC chair Gary Gensler claims the crypto rules are clear whilst plowing ahead with endless enforcement action. Indeed, Mr. Gensler's view is Congress should provide the commission plenary authority to regulate DLT projects and increase its budget so it can hire scores of more attorneys to probe each new project through the Howie lens. As Mr. Gensler explains, the test to determine whether crypto assets are security is clear. The SEC has taken and will continue to take our authorities as far as they go. While the SEC has provided clouded uh, clouded guidance, the folly of Mr. Gensler's approach is clear. Whoa. A system where regulation comes via an activist commission bringing endless in investigation and enforcement actions will kill the future economy. The Howey test with its 1930 investor protection rationales and disclosure regimes benefit only regulators. In fact, taken as a whole, the massive bureaucracy surrounding securities has done little to protect investors, investors or stop fraud. Shout out to CEI. Nicely done. The Competitive Enterprise Institution, guys. That is a doozy. Be sure to check that out. That is an absolute great read. All right, guys. Listen, I'm going to end this video like I do all of my videos and remind you guys of this. That old money doesn't want you to win. They don't want us to win. They would rather that we remain a cog in their perpetual wheel 
of trading our time for dollars. They don't want us to play in the same playground that they play in, but we allow our money to work for us. This is our chance to win, guys. The digital asset space is our chance to win. We are in the midst of the greatest transfer of wealth in the history of man. Are you participating or are you standing on the sidelines? Here's what I do know that the battle for you has already been fought and the victory is yours. Go get it. I'll talk to you soon, guys. See ya. Bye.